So what's it like riding 14 inch supermotos on the Suron? Definitely have a lower center of gravity. Feels way more comfortable. That's coming right up. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Cordero. Welcome to Run Playback, where we help you with EV tech tips to lead a more efficient and affordable lifestyle. Let's be creative and save money at the same time. Today we'll check out the Flow Wheels 14-inch Supermoto wheel set for the Suron. This wheel set is a slight compromise from the popular 12-inch Supermoto set. While the 12-inch wheels are great for cornering in tight spaces, the 14s are more suitable for our daily commuter style of riding. So let's get to it. Another unboxing. Here we go. Ooh. What? Wow, look at that. 14 inch supermotos from Flow Wheels with the gold hub and a gold valve cap. Wow, this is really, really cool. I could tell that the spokes were installed perfectly with just the right amount of tension. So we went for the lower profile 180 size tires, 2.5 inches times 14, 1.85 by 14. And we also got this rim tape. So we have this reflective orange, brand new tires. It's not on the bike, so it'll be easier to apply. Super fast shipping, really quality stuff. So now let's install the 14 inch Supermotos. We have a new package from Saran Shop. Took a while, got stuck in customs. Let's see what's inside. So it looks like we have some swing arm guards. Pretty cool. Guards for the peg brackets, I think. Some hardware. And then we have our custom, I think it's 500 pound spring, something like that. 550. Here's our spring. Very cool. Right, let's install it on the bike. You know, these tires are thicker, so I think the turning radius is gonna be a little bit different. Let's try it out. Okay, I like it. It's definitely more, um, I don't know, what's the word, playful? Feels more playful. So you do have a quicker acceleration, but even the braking is a little bit better too, I think. I feel like I can stop a lot faster. Okay, so when I said that the bike feels like it has more stopping power, it was because a 100 millimeter front tire was actually rubbing against the stanchions of our Fast Days fork. On high speed runs, the fork would compress and create a jarring secondary brake effect. So we hit up Flow Wheels and let them know the situation. I told them I'd like to try an 80-80-14 tire instead, and they were totally cool with it. Then I hit up Alex over at Detroit Moped Works, who had the tire shipped overnight to his shop. So let's head over there now. So we had a group ride the other day. Rick was out riding and um, he noticed that when he was stopping he'd feel additional resistance as if the bike would like almost break and then break again. When you squeeze your front brake, your forks compress. At that point, it brings your tire up into whatever's above it. Uh, sometimes on the vintage bikes, we'll see it come up into a fender. So the solution to that, skinnier tire, this tire right here, is 100 by 80. Uh, what you got is the 100 is the width, and then the 80 is the height on it. Ordered some tires that should be coming FedEx two-day delivery from Treatland any moment now. When you get tires, the smaller they are, the more difficult they are to take off a bike. So this is a 14, it's not 
too, too small. And then when we get into like the 16 and 17 inch moped tires, they become increasingly easy to do. Uh, Rick said that he removed a little bit of air from the uh, tire at home, but was having a hard time getting the bead to unseat. So I'm just gonna stand on it and kind of, uh, kind of try to break, break the bead there. So you can see the bead coming, coming off and you just kind of go around the whole tire and get the bead to come loose. When you're trying to get the tire onto the rim, you want your bead, your, I guess your opposing side of the bead, to get as deep into the rim as possible to give you play with the other side to come on and off. So we need it all to be free, but once the bead is all broken, you just kind of depress your little guys. Some people will loosen the valve stem. I don't like to because they don't always get themselves back into their home that easily. So I just kind of compress it, put as much weight on it as I can, get as much air out as I can, and time to start fighting with it. The tool that we use are tire spoons. We use the park tool ones here. You know, so again, you can see I'm using my weight to get the bead into the rim. I'm just kind of trying to get a, a feel for how difficult it's gonna be. So it looks not as bad as I thought it might be. Hey, look at that. Relatively painless, all things considered. You see, I'm kind of trying to get my knees into it to push the bead as deep as I can to get as much slack on this other side as I can. That's what we're looking for. Push around it, go back and forth, see what feels okay for you. And so before I take the, uh, the whole tire off, I'm gonna take the tube off from inside of it. All right. The tube is out. Something that we do usually do is that most of the time when a tube comes into us, it's gonna have this little guy down here as well as two nuts on it. We used to put both nuts on the outside and use them to lock to each other, but we realized that in fact it's better to keep the second of these flat nuts on the inside. What it does is it pushes up um, this area of the tube and allows your bead to sit a little bit nicer around it. Normally I just use the hot soapy water going on, but we'll try it today going off. A, cleans your hands while working with tires and B, helps things slide a little bit nicer. There it goes. Ta-da! These are uh, gorgeous wheels. Nice as anything that we ever see come through here. Uh, for sure, I mean, the spokes are like a nice thick gauge. Everything appeals, appears to be true. The machining on the hub looks great. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't find a thing to complain about, um, a little different than what we're used to as far as these sorts of bearings. Normally we're used to a thinner axle, so we've got larger balls within the bearing. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that that is the, uh, the day's hottest technology. One debt to society later. We've been waiting all day for the tire to get overnighted from treats. FedEx um, was less than responsive on the phone, but the fella just came in and dropped it off to us, so we are excited. Let's see what we got. I believe we got a Pirelli, nice Italian motorcycle tire, much thinner there, which will uh, give the, uh, will correct the issue with the fork clearance. Uh, but we do have the same rise with the 80 in that direction. Pirelli is a, is a wonderful name brand tire. This will be the sort of the thing that you'll find when you're watching actual sport bike racing, you know, people going 200 miles per hour or something crazy. They usually say a speed rating in the listing. Yeah, you'll be able to Google the Pirelli tires and see the uh, speed rating is on it. With tubes, after we remove them, there's always a chance that we've gotten a little pinch in it when we were using our tire levers. So before reinstalling them, I always kind of give them an over inflate and then listen to them. If you want to be really thorough, you can submerge it underwater like you're a uh, car tire shop, but I mostly just kind of listen around it and you will be able to hear it's a tube, so you can hear the noise of it resonate through. Seems like we did good earlier today and didn't pop it. So deflate the tube fully. I think with bicycles, the correct thing to do is to have your tube partially inflated with motorcycles and mopeds and e-bikes. I think you're better off to start with it totally flat. It decreases your chance of pinching the tube. It also gives you a little bit more room when you're trying to get the bead of the tire to sit into the lowest point of the rim to give yourself that slack to slide it under the rim all the way down. If you do have a really hard tire and you want to soften them up, you can use a heat gun, set it in there, and just kind of let it blow the hot air around. It'll soften up the tire and it'll make the process a lot easier for you. Um, on a nice summer day, you can actually just leave it out in the sun for a while, that'll soften them up. Yep, that's uh, correct on the rotation. First, try to shove, shove it in there, and I try to do my best to not use tools, even though the 
tools do exist. The tools increase your chance of popping things, ripping things, scratching things. Better to just fight it the best you can by hand. I'm saying that now, probably in three seconds, I'll be using a tool to put it on here. Enjoy the pay. Boop. So, got that on with no tools. Made myself not look like a liar, so that's exciting. Uh, like I mentioned, you wanna leave this little nut on the inside, it'll help push this up so that your bead can seat a little bit nicer. Not too hard, but a little clumsy. You're just kinda shoving your fingers in there and getting the valve stem through. And this tire does feel a bit softer than the one we took off, so it should be a little bit grippier on the road. Start on this side, getting the bead seated. And it's a circle, so just kinda go back and forth and round and round the best you can pushing the bead in as deep as you can to give yourself the slack on the other side. Gonna get back into this soapy water situation. Help everything move a little bit better. Hopefully my hands don't slip from it. I am resulting to tools, but we'll try to be as gentle as we can. All right, so I believe that in cars and bicycles, people do something where they slide the spoon around the rim. Um, I don't have a lot of success doing that, so I do it as you just saw. And basically now, as I inflate it, I'm gonna try to get the bead to sit evenly around it. Um, so now is an important time for the tire to slide into its home with as little resistance as possible. So the maximum PSI for using this is 45, but while seating it, you usually go a little bit higher. So right now I'm at 80. Looks like I did a good job. Basically you're looking for the uh, little lips there to be equidistant around the rim, and I feel like we did, did a pretty all right job. So now I'm gonna just deflate it one more time, fill it to that 45, and uh, put the dressings back around the valve stem. Back to 45, this little guy is here. Cool, and bonus about using soap to uh, lubricate the tire on, your hands are relatively clean, the tire is relatively clean, and, um, and we're done. Okay, so Alex mounted the tire on the 14 inch Supermoto wheel, and as you can see, it's much more narrow, and there's no issues with the clearance through the stanchions on the fork. With the original 100 millimeter tire, it was just way too wide for the Fast Ace fork, and it was getting stuck inside of the stanchions and pulling the dust seal down, which is super dangerous if you're going really fast. You hit the brakes, the fork compresses, and then the tire gets stuck, and it feels really jarring. It feels like someone just hit the regen brake on you. So if you do have the fast ace fork, I would recommend getting a 80-80-14 tire. And shout out to Flow Wheels for reimbursing us for the new tire. Uh, we sent them the information and some videos on what was happening, and they took care of it really quick. So we also installed this direct mount handlebar riser. So very similar to what we had before, but it's anodized orange and it lifts the handlebars up just a little bit higher. We also added a Warp 9 peg. It's a limited edition fox orange. Also the suspension triangle from Warp 9. Over here is the Surround Shop 550 pound spring and that's orange as well to complete the look. And as you can see, we have the stock seat on and uh, if you don't know, here's what happened. So that was the first time the bike looped, and of course, the seat got damaged. So um, we sent it over to Saul. He's gonna repair it, and hopefully we get that back soon. Now let's do our second ride with the 14-inch Supermotos. See how it feels. Okay. I definitely can feel the clearance on the front wheel. Um, before, when I was turning, it would get stuck. So uh, it's way more maneuverable. Definitely have a lower center of gravity. So uh, not only am I able to flat foot it, but I'm able to kind of lean a little bit more. It feels way more comfortable. Yeah, 
I just feel like I can really kind of whip this around a little bit easier. Tire size feels perfect for this setup. You know, 100 millimeters is kind of cool, but to avoid that rub, it's uh, de definitely necessary to change it up a little bit. Super fun, I like it. Okay, so we are going to do our performance test with the Flow Wheels 14 inch Supermotos. Right away, you could feel the lean, sort of that counter steering, push steering, feels way more intuitive, feels really good. Let's take it out on the road over here. Yeah, you know, cornering, way tighter. The, uh, the acceleration feels faster. Definitely different though. Definitely different from turning with the 17-inch uh, wheels. Now, off-road, these tires probably won't be the best, but um, you know, they are thick enough, I think, for just, you know, minimal off-road usage. But these things are really, really, really made for city riding, daily commuter kind of thing. I'm really more wary of the potholes now. Um, just because the wheels are smaller, you know, I don't want to get clipped or anything. I don't want to lose my balance. I'm definitely more aware of that. Okay. So much wind noise in this helmet. <laughs> I don't even know if you guys can hear me. Um, right now I'm using a uh, full face mountain bike helmet just because um, I don't really ride that fast. I'm going through downtown. So lots of stop and go. It's summertime. Figured a full face mountain bike would be sufficient. But obviously if you're riding at higher speeds, if you're stunting, that kind of thing, definitely use an MX helmet. So the question is, will I ever go back to 17 inch? Um, I don't think so. I think I like it like this. You know, it makes the bike just uh, a little bit smaller. So it fits me uh, better, I guess, more proportionately. You know, you definitely, uh, definitely, yeah, definitely has like a kind of a carding type of uh, handling to it. Something I got to get used to. I think as a daily commuter, the 14-inch Supermotos are perfect. You know, some of the complaints on the 12-inch are that you know makes the bike kind of look like a toy bike, uh, which you know I kind of, I kind of assumed as well. Like before I saw it in person. I saw a Moto Mat set up, and it, it actually doesn't look that small, you know, comparatively. Now, now that I'm used to the 14 inch, it doesn't actually make the bike look like a toy bike, um, especially if you have other mods on it. So yeah, this is the kind of riding that I do, generally. If you do this kind of riding, then I think the 14 inch Supermotos would be right for you. When I was doing that Detroit group ride, um, I definitely felt, you know, when I was steering, I was getting some speed wobble because I think what happens is that when you're at speed and when the wheel is like rotating, it widens out and then that's when it got stuck on the stanchions. I was wondering like, what is that? You know, I thought my regen was on or something, but on the GLE app, I had it turned off. And I didn't even have the, uh, I don't even think I had the um, regen brake installed. So they do like summer streets here in Ann Arbor, which is cool. They close down the streets. 
have all the restaurants uh, put seating outside and things like that. It makes the city feel a lot more dense than it actually is. But yeah, I, uh, I think this setup is really, really cool. Definitely recommend. So first impressions are that Flow Wheels offers quality wheel sets along with great communication and customer service. The 14 inch Supermotos create a much snappier ride than our 17 inch wheels. Big shout out to Chris at Flow Wheels and we look forward to supporting their unique custom products. If you wanna dive into more EV tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.